Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Guys, do you remember the Babolat play rackets? Well, today I'm going to be talking about what happened to them. Stay tuned. So guys, did you own a Nike watch or a Fitbit that was the rage about 10 years ago? I know I bought a watch from Nike because they had a wall full of them um, at the Apple store. So I was like, oh, it's like a hundred bucks or 120 bucks, I, I, told, I forgot. And I put one on for like literally three, four months. And that was all I got out of that watch. I got kind of tired of it, right? Um, it basically told me the same data over and over again because I did the same thing over and over again. Babolat decided to come out with a connected racket about a year later, right? And it was called the Babolat Play. And they came out, came out with it in the pure drive form first. Black racket with orange trim. The orange trim always denounces play, like in this one, right? So I was at um, a meeting in Colorado at uh, Babolat's offices when they introduced this to all the buyers. They invited a bunch of us uh, nationwide to their offices, did a full presentation. Eric Babolat was there and talked about how excited the whole company was to introduce the play technology um, with the Babolat Pure Drive. So we all were super excited. Uh, we we're like, oh, this is wonderful. It's like the wave of the future, right? So it's like a Fitbit or a Nike watch that's part of a tennis racket. So it told you a bunch of data, right? So what you did with the racket was you downloaded the app from the Apple store. It was called Babolat Play. You open the cap up here, right? And you stuck a cord in here to charge the battery that was in this racket. So after you did that, you paired the racket with the app via Bluetooth, right? So after you successfully did that, you turned it on, right, with the button. And then you went out and played, right? So what happened to it after you played? Well, it told you a lot of great data, like how many forehands you hit, right? How many topspin forehands you hit? How many flat forehands you hit? How many slice forehands you hit? It told you the same thing on the backhand, right? It told you how many volleys you hit on the forehand side, how many volleys you hit on the backhand side. It told you how many serves you hit and how many overheads you hit. So it was pretty much a, an amazing data gathering product for your tennis. So I we were all blown away during that meeting and we were all ready to sell it. We we're all ready to get it. And everybody was just, you know, gung ho about the product. They even gave me one to take with me home. So I got the whole thing. I connected it, downloaded the app. It worked wonderfully. It worked wonderfully. Um, I found out that I actually, even with my semi-Western grip, that half the time my forehand was flat, right? So I'm holding it, you know, with a frying pan grip like this, but for some reason I'm coming through flat. So my, my ball was, my, my racket was coming through like that, through the ball flat, right? And then about 40... 9% I hit with top. So 
there's something in here that you know tells me that I'm coming up on the ball to hit flat or to hit with top. So um, just to backtrack for one second, before you were able to down, after you downloaded the app, it asked you a couple questions. Um, one of them was, are you righty or lefty? So it could tell you, it could tell if you're hitting a forehand or a backhand. So that was actually really important, right? But going back to playing, um, it was amazing data that uh, they provided you. And then, so the whole concept behind play was not only data though, they were trying to implement a community of play. So after you downloaded the app, you created a profile. With that profile, you could link to everybody who owned a play racket. Now, and that person could be your coach. So your coach who wasn't with you or isn't with you every day can see how you did, right? How many forehands you hit, how much energy you played with, right? How long you played for, right? There was also a mode that was for practice or for a match that you could actually tell if you practiced the way you played or if you were better at practice or if you were better in a match, right? So that was some great, great data that this racket provided. Um, after the Pure Drive came out, the Pure Arrow came out and then they came out with a new version of a Pure Drive. Um, price was 350 for that racket. I think the first edition was like 399. They were trying to get $400 for that. Um, but, um, so here's the thing though, everything was wonderful. People were super excited. I feel like, um, six months we sold a good amount. Um, people were joining the community. Here is where we started running into some issues. Um, so we sold a bunch and customers started to uh, complain about, I can't, I can download the app, but I can't pair. They had a pairing problem um, with the phone and the racket. Uh, they had to update the firmware, but it took a while for the programmers to get it going. So it was really hit and miss. Um, before this racket, the, the play records were even launched, they had its own dedicated website. It had its own dedicated customer service. If there was anything wrong with it, uh, they basically sent you out a tag to send it back and they will send you out a new one. Uh, so, I mean, they had that one figured out, but the problems kind of started mounting up. The firmware took weeks, if not months, to kind of figure out um, and to get it going. And then the other problem was for the people who actually used it uh, and used it often, right? They, this cord here that they plugged into there, the cord that they plugged into there, started breaking. So because this wasn't, I mean, it wasn't built was enough quality where, you know, when you shove the cord in, in and out, in and out, um, enough that uh, it could withstand all that, uh, let's say, you know, daily use. So if you plug this in every day, you pretty much, this was gonna break and it was gonna break pretty quickly. I mean, I've seen um, things where I've seen rackets where like this thing kind of came out, like literally that metal part came out of people's rackets. Um, so I was like, you got your firmware problem, you got your charging problem. Um, but the major thing was, well, what happened to your Fitbit? What happened to your Nike watch, right? Like me, I was looking at the same data over and over again, um, unless the player decided that, hey, I'm gonna make a concerted effort to change my game uh, or to work with a coach 
to basically, you know, get better, right? Uh, your data pretty much was the same, right? So, because uh, your style of play really doesn't change, right? So people started to get bored of it after a month, two months, three months. Um, it was it became an es essentially an expensive pure drive or an expensive AeroPro, right? I do have to admit though that for some reason, when the chip is in here, like in this form, the plays, the play rackets of the of these played better. They felt better. I'm not sure if it was um, the housing in here or they made these, you know, a little better than a standard racket, but they played and felt better. I mean, was, was it worth double the price? Um, probably not. But uh, because of those problems, uh, it, they, these things didn't make it. Um, but I mean, if you think about it, you know, where's Fitbit today? Nike hasn't made that watch in like how many years now? Eight? I mean, it kind of came and gone, you know, just like that. Our connected materials, our connected um, sports items like rackets uh, or fit things still even popular these days. I mean, I know that they're doing it to the iWatch, but um, do you still do you still need a connected tennis racket? Do you need a connected soccer ball or basketball? I don't even hear about it anymore these days. Um, so, I mean, I know that they did the things on the bottom with the Sony and the Zep, right? Those things are done too. So, uh, play was probably a fad, just like um, everything else. But that's pretty much what happened to, uh, you know, the Babolat play rackets. So they're, you know, pretty obscure. I rarely get one of these in anymore. Uh, but hey, they did exist and it was a good time while it lasted. Okay, so thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.